and verse number 2. Adnar Judson, the famous missionary who went to Burma, endured Burma's sweltering heat for 18 years without a furlough. The first six of his years there, he never had a single convert, not one. He endured torture, imprisonment, and he admitted that he never saw a ship sailing out but what he wished he was on it going home. His wife's health broke and he had to send her on a ship back to the homeland and he knew he wouldn't see her for at least two more years. And he wrote in his diary, he said, if only we could just find some little quiet place where she could recover, the two of us on earth, where there would be peace and recovery. But then... He steadied himself by saying, as a proscript in his diary, he said, but I'm almost the only person on earth who knows this language that can deliver salvation to these Burmese people. And life is short. I'd say he endured. James chapter 1 and verse number 2, I want to speak to you about learning to endure. God's school of endurance. We've learned to endure some things, but I don't want to make it sound like we've endured anything like the Lord Jesus or like the Apostle Paul or like Adoniram Judson. I would rather feel like what the Apostle Paul said, that our, our light affliction is but for a moment. In James chapter 1 and verse number 2, the writer said, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let, let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Father, we pray that you'd bless us as we look at this brief passage of Scripture. And Lord, may we learn some lessons that you'd have us to learn tonight that would make us prepared for the trials and the temptations and the and the tribulations that come our way tomorrow and next week and next month and throughout life, I pray you'd bless us tonight. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. I want to ask you a question. <clears throat> How many of you today would, would like to have strength? <laughs> Ms. Crockett, I asked her how she's doing. She said, I'm tired. I said, well, welcome to the club. Tired people rule the world, right? <laughs> I'd like to have more strength, wouldn't you? How many of us would like to have victory? Hmm? Prosperity? <laughs> yeah, have a little more money than there is month. How many of you would like to have contentment? Yeah, I think if you've got contentment, you've got pretty much everything else that will level out in your life. Let me ask you another question. How many of you want tribulation? <laughs> not, not many. <laughs> Not many. Most of us don't. But it's tribulation that works patience according to the scripture. Tribulation, trials, heartaches, hardships. Like in the life of Adoniram Judson and many others in Fox's Book of Martyrs and we could go on and on about how many people have endured and yet they were better on the other side when they came out. Without endurance... You're not going to have these other things that I ask you about without endurance. In God's school of trials and endurance, we gain what we need. Patience. We read about patience here. Patience means to abide under, 
to abide under. In other words, when the pressure is on, we have to abide under the pressure. Are you, are you with me there? We have to abide. God lays certain burdens on us and we must abide under their, those burdens or we're not going to have anything else. And we need to work by faith. We need to praise God by faith. But we need to wait by faith. Oh, don't you just despise waiting? Oh, man. You want your tax return right now. <laughs> and uh, that's why a lot of people lose part of their tax return is they, they get on a deal where you can get it back quicker and you don't get it all back. Somebody else is... <laughs> as beneficiary of your, of your deposit. And uh, we don't like to wait. I mean, back in, back in the Western days, in the 1880s and so forth, people would go out to wait for the stagecoach to come along only to find out they had missed it. And they say, oh, I guess we'll have to wait another month. Now people are upset if they miss the elevator, next elevator going up. We don't like to wait. Some of us, don't learn to endure and we quit too soon. Erica wouldn't play the piano quite as nicely as she does if she hadn't endured all those lessons and practices. Now she gives lessons and she plays almost as good as I do on my nose flute. <laughs> Joey and Jimmy, bricklayers, they would have never been able to perfect that skill of laying brick if they had given up back in the days when they were feeding that mixer and throwing mud up on the boards on the scaffolds and carrying brick only. <laughs> but they endured, and then they moved up to brick layer. Temptations, in our text, carries the idea of tribulations and hardships and trials. Temptation here doesn't mean that God's tempting you to sin. God doesn't do that. He tests us. And in his school of testing, in his school of endurance, we learn to gain some things as we patiently endure. The Christian life, as somebody said, is not a bowl of cherries. Many times it's only the pits. God is a strange teacher. God, God gives us a test and then the lesson opposite of what we're used to and the first lesson we're going to learn tonight is it's going to surprise you. In tribulation we learn first of all enjoyment. Look at it again in James 1-2. My brethren counted all Joy when you fall into diverse temptations, when you're tried, when you're tested, when the heartaches come and when the pressure is on and when you say, I don't know if I can do this or not, but by God's grace, I'm going to keep trying. As long as he gives me the strength, I'm going on. You say, I'm going to endure. And there's actually joy that you can find in your tribulation. Doesn't that sound strange? You're looking at me like a calf looking at a new gate. You can, as one wise person said, pain is inevitable, but misery is optional. You can't always go without pain, but you can decide if you're going to be happy. Or you can decide if you're going to be joyful. I have a book in my library in my office, and uh, it's written by some Christian counselors who say, the title of the book is Happiness is a Choice. And you can decide, yeah, I'm in pain. Yeah, I'm in discomfort. God's trials are pretty heavy, but I'm going to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, <laughs> rejoice. You can be as happy as you choose. If you never had a problem you would never know the joy of having God to solve your problem. You understand that? If we never had a problem, we'd, know, we'd never know what a light-hearted thing it is when he lifts the burden and he's able. 
God is able. Burdens can be heavy, and I'm not trying to downplay it. Some of you are going through trials now, I understand. And I'm not saying it's not heavy. I'm not saying it's not a burden. I'm saying that God says in the Word, which we believe, that we can experience joy while under the burden. Endure with patience. The Bible says count it all joy when these problems come. In other words, try shouting your way through the problems. Just try saying a few hallelujahs and praise the Lord and maybe things will change for you. Uh, <clears throat> we sing sometimes, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Where's that come from? That's out of the Bible too, isn't it? And in, in the book of Nehemiah, it says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And if you're going to have strength to endure the burdens, you better learn to be joyful even though the burden is heavy. Can't find anything else to be excited and joyful about? Watch a version of the Three Stooges. <laughs> we like Three Stooges, don't we, Rick? You, wasn't it you that gave me that clock a long time ago, years ago, a clock. I hung it in my office. It was a Three Stooges clock. I still got it. You gave that to me. You forgot. I didn't. <laughs> we, used to, we used to talk about the Three Stooges pretty often. I watched the Three Stooges... Yesterday evening, and I, I don't watch much television, but it was on, and whatever was on, I didn't like, and so I hit the channel selector, and bang, there's a Three Stooges on there, and I said, glory be to God. <laughs> we get to laugh a little bit. They're banging each other in the head with a, with a sledgehammer, poking each other with a rod in the eye. I'm, that's funny. <laughs> Running a handsaw across each other's head grabbing each other by the hair and yanking it. Man, that's funny. <laughs> I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. How? Under heavy burden. How can we have that? It's when you decide if we become cynical to the point, and boy, I tell you, we live in a, we live in a culture today where it would be easy to be cynical. You watch what's going on in the political scene, you watch what's going on in the news, you watch what's happening in our culture with all the craziness that's going on, it's easy to become cynical and say, man, I give up. I'd like to check out of Earth, move to Mars. I'd even go to the moon. There's no atmosphere there, but I'd rather have that. <laughs> but it's easy to become cynical and bitter and angry. But life is hard to endure when we don't count it all joy. I'm not saying you can smile or laugh when you're in a great deal of pain, but you can have joy. And these, the, when the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, it says, Think, if there be any virtue, if there be any, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Remember Paul and Silas in jail at Philippi? Paul and Silas. <laughs> They're in jail. They've been thrown in jail and beaten. I mean, they've been whipped. They're bloody and hurting. And they're in jail at midnight. What are they doing? The Bible says they were singing praises to the Lord. How do you do that when you're in jail? Well, it beats crying. How do you do that when you're bloody and swollen and beaten and blistered and you're hurting? Well, it helps take your mind off of it. I got choked on a banana coming to the church this morning, <laughs> of all things. I've, I've had, since I had that stroke a couple of years ago, I've had a swallowing problem. I don't know if that caused it or not, but that's when, that's since then I've noticed it. And sometimes I swallow food, and if I don't take a drink first, just the solid food, especially cornbread, and uh, I found out today, bananas, you take a big bite, and you don't have anything to drink with it, and it hangs right there, and it won't go down. And so to get my mind off of it, I mean, this wasn't a time when I was wanting to smile and watch the Three Stooges right then. <laughs> but we need something to get our mind off of it. So I, I just stopped the car and got out and started walking around the car until it began to pass. We need something to take our mind off of the pain. And joy is the best way. Well, now here's the second truth I want you to notice. Trials not only can bring enjoyment, but trials can bring enlargement. Here's what I mean by that. You can grow when trials come. 
If you think back in the times when you grown as a Christian, when was it? Was it when you were on the mountaintop with nothing but happiness and praise and life was a bowl of strawberries and cream? Or was it, did you grow the more, most after you came out of the valley of, of affliction? I think you'd have to be honest and say you probably grew more in the valley. Trials can bring enlargement. In James 1, 4, look at it, it says, <coughs> in James 1, 4, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now, when it says patience there, it's not talking about sinless perfection. We know we're sinners, right? And just because we got saved doesn't mean that that sin nature was eradicated from us. So we know that we're not going to be sinless perfect, but perfection here is like, like what it talks about the Lord Jesus. In Hebrews it says that, uh, <coughs> that the captain of our salvation was made perfect through our suffering. Do you think he wasn't perfect before? He was already without sin and perfect in the sense of sinlessness. Jesus never sinned. He never was a sinner. But he became perfect in that he was allowed to grow into a different position than what he was born into. And you and I, when we go through suffering, we can mature. We can be enlarged. We can be more complete than we were before. God has a growing process that he wants us to go, th go through. Uh, an oak tree is the perfection of an acorn. The Yankees say acorn. We're in the south. Oak tree grows from an, an acorn. And so it enlarges, it grows, it matures. And we grow under stress. Somebody wrote these words, uh, when you're discouraged and feeling a little blue, take a look at the mighty oak and see what a nut can do. We grow under stress. I like what the psalmist said in Psalm 4.1. The psalmist said this, Thou hast enlarged me when I was in stress, in distress. And that happens in our life. When we go through God's school of endurance and we stay by the stuff and we say, Lord, I'm going to see this through with your help. Can't do it without you. And when we come out on the other side, we will be enlarged, we will grow, we will be stronger, we'll be more mature than we were before. You see, the reason a lot of Christians, a lot of Christians are flashing the pan, they're here today and gone tomorrow. They're in church and then they're out of church. They're, they're soul winner today and tomorrow you'll find them at the beer joint. And, and uh, they're just, they're not very stable. You know why? Because they got picked too green. Instead of growing like the oak tree, instead of growing, you ever, you ever eat a good, how many of you love summertime tomatoes? Slice those things up real thick and put them on, on a slice of bread, salt it, and put some Miracle Whip on it and another piece of bread and eat a tomato sandwich. Those summertime tomatoes, they're what my mother would say, they're larrapin. <laughs> but those little green things you get out of the grocery store in the wintertime, they've let them ripen back in the warehouse. <laughs> my Good friend, Ken, Kendrick Sade, wanted me to be a truck driver with him back in the 70s. And we went to California, took a load of chicken out there and, and waited around for a load of lettuce and it just rained and rained and rained. We couldn't get the lettuce, so we headed back to Nogales and picked up a load of green tomatoes. We were going to haul them to New Jersey. And those poor people up there were going to have to eat. They were little green, knotty things about that big and they were just dark green. Now, you know they put them in the warehouse. Of course, we're gonna, it's going to take us probably a week to get them to New Jersey. <laughs> and then they're going to put them in the warehouse before they ship them out to the grocery store. And then once they get to the grocery store, they may let them sit in the back storeroom before they ever get, make it out to the shelf. So they start turning kind of pink. They will turn. But you slice one of those things open and it's just mealy and green. still tastes green on the inside. You know what happened? They had to pick them too green. You know what happens to Christians who do not endure God's 
school of endurance, if they don't stick with it and let God do the teaching, if you don't pass the test, <laughs> and you know, the thing about God is he doesn't let you flunk. He just makes you re-enroll. Re <laughs> if we don't learn from God's school of endurance, we're picked too green, not like a summertime tomato. Well, don't be picked too green. Let me give you a third thing. We can gain not only enjoyment and enlightenment, but we can gain, I'm sorry, gain enlargement and enjoyment, but we can gain enlightenment. Look at what he says in James chapter 1, uh, verses 4 through 8. He said, But pa let patience have her perfect way, work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Enlightenment. See, when we're going through a test, a trial, a tribulation, we're in God's school, We need enlightenment, wisdom. We have to be able to see it from God's point of view and to be able to get through it in the right way, we need his wisdom. I'm saying this, when, when hardship comes, pray for God to give you wisdom so you'll continue on the school of endurance instead of flunking out and have to re-enroll again. When trials come, difficulties come, you need wisdom. Wisdom, knowledge can come from about anywhere, but that's many times fleshly, earthly knowledge. Wisdom comes from God. And wisdom is learned from looking up. Right? I walked a mile with pleasure. She chattered all the way but made me none the wiser for all she had to say. I walked a mile with sorrow, not a word, said she, but oh, the things I learned from sorrow when sorrow walked with me. Fourthly, I know you probably got some of that food back there on your mind, so I'm going to try to go through this a little faster. Buckle, buckle up your seatbelt. Ready? We can receive enthronement. I'm talking about this being in verse number 12. Look at this with me. Blessed is the man that, what's the next word? Endureth temptation, trial, testing. For when, that, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. A crown. A crown. You pass the test, you receive a crown. And God wants you to be, God wants you to have dominion. As a child of God, he wants you to have dominion over all these things that can wreck your life and wipe you out. He, can, he wants you to be in charge of those things, but he's not going to crown us until we learn to endure. We have to endure his school. In other words, there's no crown without first carrying our cross. No crown without a cross. God wants us to have the crown, but he won't enthrone us until we learn to endure. That's what I'm talking about tonight, is just enduring. Proverbs 25, 28 says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. You see, when we're going through some trial, some tribulation, man, we give in to the emotions sometimes. We say, I, that's it, I'm done, I quit. I'm not going back to church. I'm done praying. I'm not interested in reading my Bible. I don't even want to be around Christians. And so we let emotion bring us out of that trial that we were supposed to endure. But if we have no rule over our own spirit, we're letting the enemy come in. I mean, it's like 
broken down walls, according to Proverbs. The enemy is going to come in and trample over us. We owe it to ourselves as well as to God to have rule over our spirit and say, no matter what happens, no matter how miserable things might try to be, I'm still going to serve God. When Job went through all of the trying and testing and all of those things that happened to him, he lost, he lost his family except for his wife who said, won't you just curse God and die? What a blessing, huh? <laughs> won't you just give up? Job didn't give up. He went on through God's school of testing and, and when, he, when he questioned God, God didn't bother to answer him and it's not good for us to do too much questioning of God. When God heard his questions, God asked Job some of his questions, some of his own questions. Where were you when I created everything? <laughs> God kind of put Job in his place and made him realize it's not why that we ought to ask, but we ought to be relying on who instead of why. When we go through our tribulations and our trials, sometimes we look up and say, God, why? 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 When Kobe Bryant was killed today, I, I noticed one of, the, one of the tweets and probably a jillion others like it, one of them said, why, God, why? Well, I can just tell you one thing for sure. Whether you die at age 41 or whether you die at age 91 or 101, you're going to die. It is appointed unto men once to die. And so death is coming just as surely. And just because somebody dies young doesn't give us the, the privilege to question God on why. I'm sorry he was killed. I'm sorry when people die. I'm sorry when I lose loved ones. But the truth is people are going to die sooner or later. And instead of asking why, we need to be paying attention on who can do something to bring us through that school of endurance. When you trust God, things can turn out better. And this is my last one. I'll be done. We'll go eat. Enrichment. Number five, enrichment. Enrichment comes from trials. He says <coughs> in verse number four, once again, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire. What's the last two words? Wanting nothing. You know what that means? <laughs> now that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that there's not some things out there that you don't have. It doesn't mean that you suddenly got the keys to Fort Knox, <laughs> but that you may be wanting nothing it means you've got what you really want, what you need. God has a way of enriching us when we pass the test of endurance. He gives us a satisfaction, a contentment, I've learned in whatsoever state I'm in therewith to be content. That's what the Apostle Paul said. He went through some trials and tribulations. It boils down to trusting God. When this enrichment comes, it's because we trust God. When we say, Lord, I don't know, I don't know why all of this is happening. I don't even know if I know how to get out of it or not, but I'm just going to trust you. You know, sometimes that's the place we need to be where we don't have any answers. We just look up and say, Lord, I don't even know what to say except I'm just going to trust you and let him bring you through. Come to the place where there's nothing you want. Sometimes I think, I'd like to have an old 1963 Corvette, 56 Ford, Crown Victoria. I'd like to have a sawmill, <laughs> a bulldozer. But you know what? When we've come through God's 
school of endurance and let patience have her perfect work, we can come to the place where we're not really wanting anything. Or if somebody gave me a 63 vet, I'd take it. (laughs) But I'm not going to go out and borrow money and buy one. (laughs) And my wife says I don't need a sawmill. If she ever run one one time, I think she'd agree with me. Everybody needs a sawmill. <laughs> it's, always, it's one of those things I've always wanted, you know. I don't, one of those one man, one man sawmills, the blade, you know, the uh, what do you call it? Bandsaw. One man bandsaw sawmill. I would love to make lumber, but it's a whim, you know. I'm not wanting one like I'd go out and spend the money if I had it or borrow the money if I could get it. God has given me what I want. I get to serve him. I get to preach to the best church in the whole wide world. Pat yourself on the back. (laughs) Married to the sweetest woman that ever existed. Got the finest family. Live exactly where I want to be. I have the health to stand up here and preach and I'm fulfilling God's calling in my life. Why would I want anything? You see? You come to the place when you've endured what God wanted to put you through. You get to the place where you don't really want anything. If he wants you to have something, he'll give it to you. And you trust him for that. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace so sufficient shall be thy supply. The flames shall not hurt thee. I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. You say, oh, pastor, I want to live that way. I want to be that way. I want to, I want to be in God's school. Well, you have to enroll. And then he wants you to endure. Let's pray. Father, we do love you and we thank you that you've given us scriptures to guide us through life. And life sometimes is tough and sometimes there are trials. And sometimes there's heartaches that seem like it's going to make our heart come right out of our chest. But Lord, we've got to trust you. We know that you're able to bring us through. Lord, we just ask, since we can't avoid this trial, and tribulation that's bound to afflict each and every one of us from time to time. We just pray, Lord, that you'd help us to endure and not give up, but to trust you. And Lord, to give us enjoyment while we're there, that we can smile. And like Paul, Barnabas, or, or Silas, we would just sing in the midst of the trials to pass the time until you deliver us. We pray you'd bless us in the invitation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you please stand as the piano plays? And if you need to pray, step out. And-